Hello everyone, I'm Ragnarok, and welcome to The Reckoning. So today we're going to be looking at the Order of Felgarth faction for the Age of Calamitous mod on Conan Exiles the game. We're going to be taking a look at the armors, weapons, buildings, utilities, and decorations uh, when you choose the Order of Felgarth as your faction. Um, remember to hit the subscribe button above to be notified of any future videos. Um, if you do like the video, hit that like button. It does help out. And if throughout the video you uh, have any questions or there's anything I uh, forget um, or don't go over clearly, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I do read all the comments. Okay, so here's the Tier 1 building for the Order of Felgarth. It is the Oak Building. Um, it is The Oak Building is the only building out of all the factions that is shared amongst two factions. Um, the Stormhold faction and the Felgarth faction share the same building. Um, same thing. It's basically made out of oak wood. Uh, the difference is the roofing, which we'll take a look at once we get up there. Um, but it's the roofing you get with the tier one is the gray tiled roof. Um, so instead of the multicolors of Stormhold, you get the gray. And that takes slate to make. One of the Felgar's faction's lights is the Temple Torch. It's more of an indoor torch, but I put it outside. As you can see, it's kind of basic, just candle design. Nothing too fancy. Uh, the Order of Felgarth has two storage devices. Um, the first one is the barrel, handcrafted. Uh, it takes 30 shaped oak wood and three steel reinforcements. Um, it holds 50, it has 50 storage slots. Pretty cool looking. It's, I can see you decorating in place with it. And pretty small too. Uh, the second one is the wardrobe. Um, has, I believe it's the, I want to say it's the second highest out of all the factions. Uh, it has 85 storage slots. Um, it's actually pretty easy to make too. Um, it only takes 50 shaped oak wood, which is actually pretty easy to make even from the start. Okay, and here's the two, the tier two building, uh, the slate brick building. Uh, it shares the same door and the roofing as the tier one structure. Um, it's pretty similar to the Stormhold factions, uh, except for instead of a white stone, it's more of a gray stone, and the wood accents is more dark. It's actually kind of nice. I actually like it a little better than the Stormhold factions. Uh, so this is the Felgar's fountain. Um, it is the water keg. It's a water source. You click on it, and there you go, cooling down. It actually replenishes your thirst. So it's basically a fountain, um, the most unique of all the fountains, and I think it, you could use it pretty good for designing a room um, instead of the fountains kind of fit more outside. This is something you could design for an indoor fountain. We have one of the decorations right here, the Orb of Vision. It's kind of cool. It actually has a little, it has a little movement to it. If you stare at the orb a little bit, it looks like molten, like either like burning paper or like molten metal or something. Um, so it's a kind of a cool little decoration, nothing special. You have the high chair, just a basic chair, nothing, again, nothing special. Nice little design work, though. The decoration NPC for Felgarth is the Magus Guard. It's basically a pure decoration guard that you can put around just to give a little more, uh, liven up your place a little bit more. Kind of cool, gives more of a, I don't know, druid-type, magic user-type look. Let's take a look at that roofing real quick. So there's that gray tiled roofing. Um, same as all the others, just gray. More of like a charcoal. All right, so right here we have the slate fortified building. Um, the door and the roofing get upgraded. The roofing is the gray reinforced build, uh, the gray reinforced tile. And again, pretty similar to the Stormhold factions, just a darker gray, but everything else is more or less the same. We have the Felgarth banners, and as with all the other banners, it comes in all four of the sizes. Kind of nice little design. I like the eagle and stuff, and it's just a very basic design. All right, so we'll start over here first. So we have the Summon and Altar. That is the Wheel of Pain for Felgarth. Holds eight thralls, um, and typical Wheel of Pain. And it can be returned to your inventory, just like all the other faction Wheel of Pains. Um, and it takes 40 steel reinforcement, 25 iron reinforcement, and 15 mystical dust to craft. Oops. Didn't mean to actually put that in my inventory. There we go. Put it back down. 
This is the contractor, the vendor for Felgarth, the Magus contractor. It's kind of cool. Again, very unique. Kind of like a spiritual ghost looking thing. And this is where you would craft your Magus guard. Also where you would do all the um, missions that you get um, through the Age of Calamitous. Now, the Felgarth faction is unique in that it has kind of... Um, I don't know if I would call it like a magical ability, but there you do you do learn a special feat um, with them that you don't learn with any of the other factions, and that is transmogrification. Transmogrification. I don't know how to say it, but anyways, basically what you can do is you can put in certain mats. So these are the ones right here. There are six of them, um, and you can basically conjure certain items. So we can conjure cobalt, uh, icor. Mushrooms, puffball mushrooms, tar, and volatile glands. I mean, really, the, the cobalt, the volatile glands, maybe the icor if you, but I never have an issue getting icor. Um, and I, I guess maybe tar if you really needed to. Early game, maybe, but these, um, the mystical dust is not that bad to get. But essentially, you just put in what it needs. So, mystical dust, most of them are mystical dust and channel thatch. And channel thatch is super easy to make. You actually make that here itself, right there. You just put in some stuff and you get enchanted thatch. Real easy to make, more or less. Um, the only one that's different is the Icor. It actually takes the Vul Vulcan bees, which you get from bushes in the, well, pretty much bushes anywhere, I believe, but mostly the south. Um, and we'll test it out. So, one, if you craft one of the cobalts, you get 20 cobalt ore. Boom. Let's craft one I Icor. Or Ichor. Let me know in the comment section below how you pronounce that. I'm curious. Is it Icor with a hard K? Um, or Ichor with a CH? Or, I don't know how else you would say it, but we got 50 in that one, so that's not bad. Uh, let's see, what are we on now? Mushrooms. That's a 50 stack. Puffball mushrooms. 50 stack. Tar. 50 stacks. So it looks like 50 stacks for all of them except for the cobalt. Let's see what the last one is. I My guess is this is not a 50 stack. Oh, wow. I was wrong. I'd be wrong. So they go. So all of them give you 50 except for the cobalt ore. That you only get a 20 stack of that. The price is pretty similar. Actually, the cobalt ore is probably the more expensive one, too. Yeah, actually, the cobalt ore is the most expensive, and you get the least. So let's put these back in here real quick because I don't need these with me. And this is the enchanted table. This is just a, a normal crafting station you get with the Age of Calamitous mod. It has nothing to do with your faction choice. Um, but it is what you use to create all the different stones and woods and stuff for your faction builds. Okay, and we have the Slate Temple build. This is the Tier 4 structure. Um, again, it shares the same roofing with the Tier 3 structure, which I didn't show. I'll show. I think I only have one right there, so I'll show that a little after um but essentially same type of build shaped oak wood resin steel reinforcement chromium reinforcement pretty much the same as all the others um and again pretty similar to the stormhold just a darker gray here's one of the statues uh the temple statue kind of cool i kind of like the design of it it kind of fits with the whole idea of you know this being a temple temple build um Kind of cool light source. Okay, and let's see. Let's go over here. So we have the High Elder Throne. Sit on it. It's kind of cool because it's a little reactive. If you can see the blue, the design, it's kind of like glowing and moving. So again, it kind of shows like that mystical element of the Felgarth. Um, and again, there's the banner behind it. I really like the clean look of the eagle and stuff like that, so... Another one of the statues, the statue of uh, Vesuus Uthar. Again, probably saying it wrong. But a pretty cool statue. I think I like the one in the front a little bit more, but still decent. Here we are showcasing the die that you get when you choose Felgarth as your faction. Uh, this would be the Felgarth Grey. Um, it again, looks just kind of like the same as the roofing. It's a little bit more charcoal color. 
Um, so a darker gray, close to pretty close to black. Um, some of the pieces actually dye more black looking than gray. Um, and then you know leathers and stuff like that. You can see right there, and the and the furs and stuff are pretty gray. So nothing special, pretty basic, but it still looks pretty good. And here is the decoration pet for the Felgarth. Zavaris, Zevaris, however you want to say that. Um, again, pure decoration. Kind of cool. You could definitely make your base look a little more uh, scary or threatening with a couple of these outside. Just again, they're not they're they're actually not pets. They're pure decorations. Um, now, a couple of people in some of the other videos um, have asked, "Hey, how do I craft the the pets? I can't figure it out." Um, I I basically put in that you can craft them at the shepherd vendor, but a lot of people again. Don't, it's it is hard sometimes to figure out. There are so many vendors in this mod, so it is sometimes hard to figure it out. But basically, this is what the shepherd vendor looks like. He looks the same no matter what. It actually says shepherd when you go into him. Whatever pets you have will show up here. So there he is right there for one silver coin. Now the way you get him, real quick, you go to your feats survival, and it is is it gardener? See now you got now you got me questioning it. <laughs> No, oh, sorry, no. Where, oh, where? Ah, there it is. I knew it was there somewhere. In your currency exchange, I should have known it was under vendors. Why am I looking down here? Um, so farmer, right there. So if you learn this feat, you can make a shepherd. So once you learn this feat, there's your shepherd, and they're handcraftable. So he would be right there, shepherd. Two copper coins, 25 tim coins. So once you create that, and it's the same for every faction, um, once you learn your decoration pet, you'd craft them at there. So pretty much the vendors are kind of like crafting stations. Okay, and here's the gray reinforced tiled roofing. Um, again, nothing special, same as all the other roofings, just a ch more of a charcoal with the metal um, accent or border, whatever you want to call it. But that's basically the roofing you get for the tier 3 structure, and it's shared with the tier 4. All right, now let's take a look at some of the items, uh, weapons, and armor, and utilities that you get with the Felgarth. So right here we have the Druidic Armor. This is the armor you learn right off the bat as soon as you pick them as your uh, for your faction choice. Um, it does not have a head slot, so it's just uh, the chest, pants, feet, and hands. Slightly modified to one of the vanilla armors in-game. But pretty nice. It's a light armor. It gives a bonus to survival. It goes no temperature protection, uh, protection as do the rest of the faction's um, first tier armor. No temperature protection at all. And there you go, survival. Okay, and with all the other factions, we have the Felgarth panties. Uh, light armor, 450 durability, 5 grit, heat protection, um, and 10 armor. Pretty much the same as all the other ones. Just has the Felgarth faction on it. Okay, and the end game armor for the Felgarth are, is the Warlock's armor. Um, it is a medium armor. Gives cold protection. Six, 644 armor total. Plus 11 survival. And uh, it gives about it has about a twenty three hundred average durability. Um, kind of cool. I've seen a couple people use the hood, only the hood, as like a um, as the headpiece for some of the other armors. Looks pretty cool that way. Um, otherwise, it's just a, a basic robe. Uh, it does die pretty well though. Um, if you're role playing magic, it's probably a pretty cool way, way to go. But it's it's medium armor too, so it looks more like a light armor, but it is medium armor. And the stats really aren't that bad. All right, and here we have the High Elder Blade. It's a one-handed sword. Um, 58 damage, 15 armor pen, 57, 50 durability, and it gives a plus 5 to age agility. One of the endgame wep one-handed weapons. Not too bad. Pretty basic of a sword.
Now, one of the cool things the Felgarth does is uh, for the starter weapon and their other uh, end game weapons, if you will, um, instead of giving you a main hand weapon, the, the sword is your only main hand weapon you will craft for them. Um, it gives you offhand weapons. So you get staffs. So again, if you're playing like a mage, you get the staff is your secondary. So this one right here is the scholar staff. 13 health damage, 5% armor pen. So basically a normal uh, off one-handed offhand weapon. Um, 825 durability. And no stat bonus on that. Let's take a better look at it. And it's kind of cool. It has that same like molten metal look moving as the um that what was it the orb of vision so kind of cool the next one you get is one of the end game ones and this is the staff of vasarius or however you say that let's take a quick look at it and again it has that little orb in it Same kind of attack as the the other staff. And this one does 56 damage, 4 armor, armor penetration, 3750 durability, and bonus to survival. Oh, I should probably unequip the sword when I show that, so you can actually see the true stat bonus. There you go. And the last weapon we get is the staff of... Solatim, Sol Soladium, and again, same attack. This one actually emanates a little bit of a glow, so you can kind of act, it, it's not a massive, it doesn't have a mass, massive radius, but it will help you see a little bit at night, especially at like the darkest of nights, so you can kind of use it as a light source. Kind of a cool design. To me, it looks more like a main hand polearm, but again... Role-playing purpose is pretty cool, and it's decent as an offhand weapon. And this has 49 damage, 11 armor penetration, 4750 durability, and a bonus to survival. Okay, we're back. So I made it nighttime real quick, just so you can get an idea of how this orb works. So this is the coolest light source out of all the factions, um, the Orb of Light. Basically, you pull it out, bright light, and dulls down, and now you're Fist is glowing. It's a pretty cool light source. Carry one handed weapon. And I can pull that staff back out actually real quick. Let's see. There you go. There's your how much light it emanates. But like I said, that orb, that first brightness is kind of cool, especially if you're trying to see something off in the distance. I'll do that sometimes. I'll run around with it and I'll just kind of pull it out so you get a nice little glare on the distance and then it dies down so you can kind of see where you're going but again i actually really love it. i'll just sit there and just do it forever like i'm running and i'll just probably gets annoying after a while but i think it's pretty cool so definitely with the coolest in my opinion of uh all the light sources you get from the factions um not too bad to make either. Five Mystical Dust, 15 Moon Dust, and one Amethyst. So the Amethyst is probably going to be the thing that takes a little bit of the longest. Um, but again, they're not that hard to get. Um, just a little bit of work. Okay, and the last thing to show is the Felgarth gets a throwing orb. So basically an explosive orb. Um, it is the Arcane Fire. Um, it's made in the Alchemy Desk. It's a thrown weapon. Um... The damage is actually armor dependent, uh, like damage on most things. Um, it does arcane fire, uh, damage over time, roughly about uh, for about roughly about seventy five seconds, um, and again roughly for about twenty five damage per tick. At if you have a base armor of ten, um, I tested it out with wearing the cold embraces armor. Um, so at a little over a thousand armor, it does about eight damage per tick for seventy five seconds. So you can roughly. So you can tell, you can see that it does a decent amount of damage. Um, it's kind of like some, like the fire orb. Um, it actually will will test out in a second, um, but it actually does like a fire. So if you leave it, you you don't do damage. If you're sitting in it though, you'll continue to take damage. Um, 
not super crazy to make. Um, one Arcane Essence and three Enchanted Thatch. So you can make a decent amount of these. And here we go. We'll test it out. So we'll just, I'll throw one real quick over there. As you can see, boom. There's your fire source. Definitely looks cool. Can definitely light up an area. It's a lot cooler than the other fire. So what we'll do is we'll throw it on ourselves. And here we have the Arcane Barrier. So it is a, it's another very unique item to the Felgarth. I actually think it's one of the cooler things. Um, so I set up a couple things. I set this up real quick for it. Uh, basically what it is, it is a one-way wall. So think of it like a one-way mirror, but it's a wall. Um, it's pretty sweet. Uh, it's built at the Alchemy Desk. Uh, it's basically a building. It's a wall. Um, takes 50 Arcane Essence, one Amethyst Shard, and five Dragon Fur and Dust. Now the way this works is, it's right here, my number six slot. It looks like this. So if you have the outside face facing you, it's red. If you spin it around and you're showing the inside face, it's blue. So what we want to do is we're going to go around the backside. Now, I couldn't... Actually, let's do this first. There you go. So blue. There you go. So you get a nice blue. Now, what I could... I'll do another one right here. I, uh, let's do... Let's do one right... Let's see. I don't really care. I just need to snap somewhere. Whatever. I couldn't get it to snap on top. I, I haven't really used this. Um, I've seen it used a bunch of times, um, but I couldn't, can't get them to stack on top of each other, even though it has a stability. And I couldn't get walls to stack on top of it either. Um, so if if you know a trick to getting it to snap, let me know in the comment section below. But I believe it's only you can only basically use it on one level um, unless you build like stability sports. So in this instance, like in order to build that wall up there, I had to build these ceiling tiles. Um, so I, you technically could snack it if I if I put ceiling tiles and I just replace that wall, the middle wall right there with one or more of these barriers, you basically have all the way up, but you'd still have to have ceiling tiles in between. Um, but again, let me know if you found a way. Basically, the way they work is on the inside, it's blue. Awesome. So guess what we can do with that? We can run right through it. On the outside, it's got a nice little flaming red, which I think actually this this right here is really cool looking. I really like the look of it, but I can't go through. It is basically an invisible wall that you can only pass through one way. Um, pretty decent, too. It's got 50,000 HP, so not immense amount of HP, but it's not a small amount either. So um, it's definitely good. I would, you know, compared to, obviously, the temple foundations that, you know, these walls right here have 140,000. So, um, you know, you may not want to have this on ground level of a base that you're worried about getting purged. Um if you're building in tier four, but you could have it somewhere. And what I like about it is it's kind of like, you know, you can kind of have it as like an exit point for a building, you know, or like a window almost, you know, I could have all three of these. I mean, like I said, you're going to have to worry about stability and stuff like that um, of the structure, but you can basically have all three of these be open. So it can be a nice little open wall to see the outside and you just, it's a quick way of getting out of like a base or something, or maybe you could have it right next to like, you know, if this was water right here and a nice little uh, little pond or something, you had this built next to it or the river, you know, you can have it looking out into the pond and you're like, oh, I need to go get some fish. Cool. Go right here. Fish, whatever. The only different bad side is you can't go in. So you'd have to put a door. Um, but I mean, you can always have a door right next to it and just you don't have to open the, and close the door when you're leaving. Um, so it's a nice quick out. Um while stopping from going in. So, um, pretty sweet. I like it, and it's very unique. So, so that was a overview of the Order of Felgarth faction for the Age of Clamous Monocon and Exiles. Um, pretty cool faction. Definitely one of the factions that has the least amount of extra items, um, although it does have some of, I, I think it makes up for it, in some of the mystical items like the Light Orb the arcane uh, fire orb um, and the transmogrification or morgrification, how you pronounce it. Um, so that I think having those extra unique abilities um, and that, that one ghost guy, um, the contractor um, kind of makes up for the lack of having a variety of other items. And the building is, I would say probably tied for my second place favorite building um, with the elven faction. And then obviously stormhold for me is my favorite. Um, but that's because I like the variety of colors. But anyways, definitely a cool faction. And has definitely some uh, unique 
uniqueness to it more than though more so than some of the other ones. But anyways, um, hope you enjoyed the video. I appreciate it as always. If you did enjoy the video, hit the subscribe button. We got a lot more tutorials on the Age of Calamitous mod coming soon. Definitely leave any questions or something you'd like to see in a future video or any statements in general in the comment section below. I do do my best to treat, read them all. If you like the video, hit the like button. It really do appreciate it. It helps out the channel immensely. And like I said, hit that subscribe button so you can get notified on the future tutorials and how to's. Uh, we also do a playthrough on the game. Uh, we're currently a couple episodes in, so you can follow characters through. And I talk about different tips and tricks uh, that you can do in the Age of Clamus mod and Conan Exiles in general. Also, if you want to see more of the content, I do stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Ragnarok Live. Uh, we also have a Discord channel uh, where we talk about news, uh, gaming information, uh, help each other out, servers, we share servers, stuff like that. Links for both of those are in the comment section below. Uh, as always, had a good time. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed the video and fear the reckoning.